Oh my God. I don't know where we would be without the magic of Stan all week long with Last Resort. I want to meet that J.J. Thompson <laughs> character. I heard he's sick. <laughs> I heard he's You, you kind of know who he is, Louie, right? <laughs> uh, what a week. I wish we knew how many runs of snowboarding uh, that we got to watch. And there was just that incredible, incredible moment where we got to celebrate. Jake with that massive poach and just truly beautiful testament um, to his life and his spirit. And you know, this 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 week, this this whole energy today, I mean, this is what Jake was about. This is why he did it for moments like today. I mean, yeah, the energy out there um, all week, not just in finals, but in semifinals. I mean, Louis, you were there for the in, almost the entirety of the half pipe finals. What was it like out there? It didn't matter who was going. If you put down a hammer, you heard it from the crowd, from the industry to the true fans. This is what I love about the Open since I was a little kid, was the energy. Full energy. Welcome back uh, to the post show. I'm Sal Masekela, the legendary T-Bird, Tina Dixon, Louis Vito. If I sound exhausted, folks, it's because um, we've just been overwhelmed and we've been through like every single emotion that you can have today, right? Yeah. The highest of the high in, in, in this continued progression uh, of, of these riders pushing each other. And then, of course, you know, this, this, this honoring and, and really today the, clo the full closure uh, in that celebration of life for, for Jake Burton. We'll, we'll, we'll show you the winning runs um, first. Look, we got so much to talk about. We've got the Cliff Best line. Uh, we got our Burton Riders' Choice, where we've got the peers selecting who they thought was the best rider of the week. Our, our Rookie of the Year. We're going to go through something called What If. Ooh. What if such and such had happened? Uh, and, of course, our host picks, the moments that all of us feel uh, were our personal winners that we're going to take away with us. Shall we start with winning runs? We shall. Let's do it. Jamie Anderson in women's slope style. The most dominant woman alongside Kelly Clark. And every single year going into the competitive half pipe season, I, I think to myself, is Jamie going to do it again? And she always does. The most dominant slope style rider of all time, hands down. She rode a lot of powder last season, but she came into this season hotter than ever, especially on the contest season, had momentum coming into this event and rounded out her run with that cab. Double cork, 900, a trick that kept her out of the finals in 2019. The, the progression in women's snowboarding right now is stratospheric. And, you know, Jamie Anderson at 29 years old, we've been watching her since she was 15, 16, and she said, hey, these young women being able to ride amongst them and the manner in which they're pushing the sport is enabling me to perform at this level. And, and that a, was pure progression. Of course, Anna Gasser and Miyabi Onitsuka, incredible in women's slope style. Here is the men's winner, Yuki Kodono in 2015. He shocked the world with back-to-back -back 1620s to beat Mark McMorris. Since then, he's been in a bit of a drought, you could say until 2020, five years later. This is what Yuki put down <laughs> on the slope style course. And this was just one of the best slope style runs in the history of our sport. Absolutely incredible. Check this out. That's the trick that introduced him. And that's the trick that cements his legacy in snowboarding switch backside triple cork 1620. Yuki Kodono, who I have dubbed the oh no, here comes Kodono. Dusty Hendrickson though, <laughs> what a rookie performance with a never been done at the open quad. I mean, Red Gerard, that fight, Darcy Sharp all the way down. Women's half pipe, Shutan Kai. And Shutan Kai came into this event. She finished third in 2019 and her talent just showed in her half pipe run how she executes everything and her amplitude on this front side 900 she holds on but the best part about her run 
is this giant air to fakey. Yeah, I was watching your guys' show this morning. I was down in the media room. Uh, first of all, you all did incredible during uh, women's half pipe, but I could feel so much emotion during her interview. You could tell that it meant the world to her to win the U.S. Open. It's been a long time coming for her. She's been riding so solid for so long and finally gets crowned champ. She said this today is a, a realization of my life's dream. You can't forget Haruna Matsumoto getting that 1080 on her third run. And then, of course, this kid right here. Yuto Tatsuka. Is he the new kid to beat Yuto. in men's halfpipe? Yeah, and Yuto Tatsuka showed that he was done getting second place at contest, starting off with that giant frontside double court 1440 into that cab double court 1260. And a switch backside, 1080. And that's the trick. That was the key to his success. That was, I think it was the best half pipe final I've seen in a very long time. It, it was all time. And Jan Shearer with a great unexpected performance. He even said he didn't expect himself to be able to, to get to that level. And untraditional. It wasn't like Yuto or Scotty's run with the frontside alley oop 900. He brought something completely different to break up the Scotty and Yuto battle. Uh, you can watch all the rest of, of, of t the entirety of this event. You can go back to RedBull.com uh, and you can watch anything that you missed. And when I look at the standings of all four divisions, I just, the, the one thing that is glaring to me is that A, Japan. Asia as a whole is dominating modern snowboarding. You look at those leaderboards, and, and it is clear in a way, as international as snowboarding is, Japan is the country to beat. I feel like if we're playing a game of poker and it's divided up by country, Japan literally put all the chips on the table this week. But it didn't come overnight. These riders have been competing and they've been practicing and they've been putting their time in for years, it's just now coming to that peak. All of the discipline and, and that, that oneness coming together and showing. Look, we can talk about that all day, but we have to keep it moving. Riders choice. This is where the riders collectively make their choice as to who their favorite was. And uh, in women's slope style, the riders choosing the style masters from, from San Clemente, 19 year old Haley Langland. I mean, no surprise here. This girl is always having fun on her snowboard always changing the game and always keeping it so stylish and so clean. Haley Langland is the future of women's slope style riding. There's no question about it. 50-50 backside 180. Coming in this final jump on the slope style course. Switch front side 720 stomped. I love that. Just she watching her snowboard is enjoyable. And look at that, the men's choice. Wouldn't you know, young Dusty Henriksen. And really, Dusty came onto the scene, I'd say in January when he qualified first at the Locks Open, went on to win a Grand Prix in Mammoth, and then showed up here at the US Open. People were like, who is this rider? And oh, he'll show you. And what's interesting is we talked with, with Dusty. He'd been here before as an alternate but this was the first time that he got the invite and it changed everything. What Love really, that. really impressed me about Dusty is the fact that he was completely undeterred. How many times have we seen a young kid that not many people have heard of qualify first and everyone's like, is he the kid to beat? And then they're like, where am I? Exactly. And he did not mm -mm. care. But did, but he, I still feel like he was like, like where am I? He was yeah. just cruising. He did, yeah. It didn't matter to him. He was just enjoying himself and just riding. Yeah. And did that quad 1800 uh, for the second time, landed it, and in a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, that was insane. I can't wait till we get to watch that later in the show. Um, last resort with Stan. I mean, you talk about a guy who puts in the time, puts in the work, who's unafraid to go out there and get the information, put the mic in the riders' faces and make them feel comfortable and also probably mostly <laughs> uncomfortable. Here's some of the best of live with Stan on the last resort at the US Open. We are here, last resort live coverage of the Burton 
U.S. Open. And can we get a, any sort of preview of your pre-drop ritual? Blow away all the scariness. Wow. Yeah, that's deep. How are we feeling? Throwing the double crippler up on IG last night. Flex. Did you do it to scare the other competitors? <laughs> no, not at all. We were just talking fridge in the tent. Here he is up top, hair with the headband to match. Evan Dubois with the helmet toss. Okay, that is an age old move. Tossing your helmet into the crowd when you are in last place. You love to see that. That homie tries a quad in a t shirt. It's warm outside, but the landing is ice. Psycho. He does some jackass. <laughs> by the crowd. <laughs> I love it, Stolly. A quad 1800 in a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, he said, what is this, jackass? <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, thank you, Stan, uh, for continuing to, to, to be the soul of journalism in snowboarding. Next up, it is our Toyota Rookie of the Year. And it goes to Mitsuki Ono for the women. She rode so solid. Just how technically sound she is riding across from wall to wall. Her execution, her landing. She had a little unfortunate slam on the front nine today, but right there putting it down and showing us what we can look forward to in women's half pipe riding. Fearless. 15 years old, she came through those junior jams and uh, it was great to see her here in the finals. Like you said, just that flawless style, holding that board, the tail grab. Pretty rad. Yep. Well, um, I mean, at, ho at home, we all already know the answer to who it is for the men. I mean, this dude came in and just showed out. We finally get to watch this quad 1800. Dusty Hendrickson is the Toyota men's rookie of the year. Yeah, and it wasn't just the, qu the uh, quad cork. It was his entire run. I mean, this kid came to the US Open and got second place, largely in part to a backside quadruple cork 1800. That's the reaction to it when he got down to the bottom. Did we just miss it? Did it just cut straight to the landing? <sighs> well, you know, you got to go and rewatch it. Red Bull TV. OK, oh. there you go. All right, just, we're, 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 we're going gonna, we're gonna, to we're gonna see it at some point. All right, let's look at some what-ifs. This is where they make me uncomfortable. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> just ISO on Sal. The cash, this is, this is his second run. And what did we say from the second, back to his second feature, we were like, oh, he looks way too chill. Oh, yeah. And that Japan grab was such a way to break up the normal, you know, double nine. And he does back-to-back -back double nines right there. But that Japan grab was something I really like and how he separated himself. And then, of course, as T-Bird called it, the dust roll. The dust roll. And then first attempt ever, perfectly to your feet. That is the first time he has ever tried that trick. <laughs> and he tries it again in a T-shirt. Just just cruising. And then Sven Thorgren, he's a big what if because this kid put down some insane runs. This is his second run right here. The veteran out of Sweden, front side double cork 1080. But this right here. Yep. I call that a double Michael Chuck. You call it a double rodeo. Regardless, it's Early. And that right there, what if, if he made that would have been a double? Right. That's yes. when he would have done a double right there. Absolutely. And he easily could you could say for sure like that that would have shaken up the, the poe. What if, this is Zoe Sadowski Sanat going for the double cork 10. What if she had put this down? Her rail section was beautiful Insane. up top. And this was the trick that could have changed the game. Especially as our double, as as our defending champ, and how about Maddie Mastro? I mean, the question we're posing here is, what if Maddie Mastro had landed that last hit in the pipe? It's tough to say. 
Yeah. You know, it's it's one of those things. That's the what if. Um, but you know, Maddie rode strong. Um, the rest of the run, she really showed that she wanted it, and she you know went for it every single run. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see the man in which she recovers because she was really shaken up emotionally. She was so desperately wanted to put on a great performance uh, and defend her title. But as you said, these kind of things show the difference between good and great, and Maddie's shown us that she has great. Okay, we're going now with our picks for the week. So much shredding happened. So much. Louis, who you got? I'm going Jamie Anderson, switchback five, but it was hard to pick just one because she has now won eight U.S. Opens. That is tying Kelly Clark for the most U.S. Opens of all time. Kelly, of course, did it in the half pipe. Jamie is still doing it on the slope style course. They are the two most dominant snowboarders and that's, who have ever lived. That switch backside spin, we said, was the hardest thing to do off of those transition features. And, of course, Jamie is like, yeah, and? <laughs> Large, too. <laughs> Large and had kind of a cool access, and she landed deep and perfect. T-Bird. I think my coolest moment of the week, uh, something that I just don't want to be overlooked because it kind of encompasses the ideology of the U.S. Open, Torgir Bergram, the Norwegian, coming off the cannon box and very subtly landing in a nose butter, a la Chris Roach. Check this out. That right there. Very subtle. That's and, insane. And it's insane. He is going like 35 plus miles an hour right there. Could oh. be catastrophic, but that to me is what the U.S. Open's all about. It's riders like uh, Tour Gear who just have fun snowboarding in any environment and will showcase it on the world's biggest stage. But he had the bring back. That's the thing. He went over nose butter yep. and, brought and brought it, it back. back. Yep. Insane. Control, control, control. Tina. My favorite, moment. my favorite moment for this week. Well, there were a lot of them, but I'd have to say it was uh, the ride for Jake that we did earlier in the week, 8 a.m. Early in the morning, we got on the gondola. We got up to the top. They named a run Jake Stash. It was one of his favorite runs here at Vell, Colorado. We all showed up, thousands of people, snowboarders. And I'll tell you what, there was not a dry eye up there. We just enjoyed this run top to bottom with the flags. And at the end, it was all about thank you. Thank you, Jake. You know, the, the, what this, this event was was really, I think, closure, you know, in being able to celebrate Jake. Um, and that was a beautiful moment. My pick uh, for the week, so many, was the manner in which Anna Gosser continues to prove that, like, she might be a cyborg <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, that double crippler that she threw down in slope style, first of all, in practice where she was like, I think I could do this thing. And then posting it to Instagram being like, I'll see you all tomorrow. Uh, here's Anna Gasser. New tricks for me than about the results. Well, she said, you know, results are cool, but it's really more about new tricks for me. And when she saw and had that vision that, oh, I can do this thing, she took it there in practice. And uh, once again, proving that this women's field in 2020 is the most progressive in the history of the sport. I'm really interested in seeing when some of these slow style ladies really focus on riding transition, how fast they progress slope style. Now just give them a little time in the transition, and then the transition features are going to go yeah. through the moon. And the final moment, the collective for everyone who's watched this event, the shot heard around the world, a, a moment that changes snowboarding, no doubt, Dusty Hendrickson. Finally, we get to see this thing made, the quad 1800. And this is the first time it has ever been landed in any slope style contest ever. It's been done in big airs before, but not combined with a top slope style section. To be able to do that is massive. In a t-shirt. Nonetheless. In a, in, pink, a <laughs> in a t shirt with a pink beanie. After you've been making duct tape wallets, <laughs> washing boats, and working in a surf shop for the last year. So you Not can travel. Any more. Yeah. Game changed. Hard work pays off. Oh man. Uh, you guys 
Thank you for watching us on Red Bull TV. Jump into the big world of Red Bull TV. Don't miss the events, the films, and shows from all over the world. Download the Red Bull TV app for free, and you can sign in to watch everything offline as well. The Red Bull TV app, go beyond the ordinary. Well, my friends, uh, I'd like to take all of your final thoughts of this week before we sign off from this 2020 Burton U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships. Tina, we'll start with you. I mean, it was an emotional week, right? It was absolutely emotional. Um, the riding was just off the hook. Um, thank you, Jake. The celebration of Jake and just snowboarding in general, general was right there. And just the talent that we saw snowboarding. I mean, Those who rode and won deserved it. And this moment right here was priceless. This is what it is all about. And it just reminds us that this is a, co a collect, uh, this snowboarding is a collective. You know, as much as it's an individual activity, it is about this shared spirit that we all have. And right there, this, this is Jake Burton Carpenter in one shot. This event absolutely just made me so proud to be a snowboarder. It was not a memorial, it was a celebration. And what better way to gain full closure than to celebrate the man? I loved it. I mean, Louis? for me, this whole open's been insane because, yes, we talk so much about the modified half pipe. So seeing these riders having to change their runs from what they're doing all year, but I almost felt like it was almost a modified slope style because those transition features were so different than what those riders were used to all season. Instead of having a shark fin, you know, spine, they had to hit both sides, front side and back side. So it was progression and in in, in riders adapting in half pipe and in slope style. And that for me is what was fun to see. And also, thank you, Jake, for creating this. So we are allowed to be able to witness this great snowboarding. T-Burn. Yeah, and it's not to sound too redundant, of course. I mean, it's, it's, I like what you said where it is um, closure to the celebration of, of what Jake meant to our culture. Uh, which is really immeasurable, and will, it will take a lifetime to fully actualize that. Um, <clears throat> my final thoughts are that I've been to a lot of U.S. Opens, and I've really never seen one quite like this. Um, it was the first one without Jake, and that's the reason why. But it was one of the best U.S. Opens, I think, that I've ever been to in my entire life. And I'm really thankful to be here and, and to be sitting here with you guys as a 13-year-old as a kid going to my first U.S. Open in Stratton, Vermont. I, I just can't believe that I'm here. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Jake. Yeah. Uh, ride in peace. And I can't wait to do it again. Yeah, indeed. For me, uh, it, it is just thank you, Jake. I mean, it, it is the fact that we can continue to, to push this culture forward. And while Jake Burton uh, is no longer physically here, he was here. You could feel his presence in every single moment of this event and in today, a truly unforgettable day. Thank you, thank you, Jake Burton, for, for all of it because none of us watching or sitting here would have the joy of snowboarding in our life. Thanks to all of you for watching the 2020 Burton U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships. It has been an honor to sit with these legendary people. Thank you to our entire crew behind the scenes, our camera people, uh, uh, everyone from Rebel TV and Burden working behind the scenes to make this the best delivered snowboarding contest on the planet. And with that, we will leave you with some of the highlights from these magic four days, and we look forward to seeing you next year. And March 13th, wherever you are in the world, get out there and ride for Jake. We'll see you next year.